Windows Subsystem for Linux is a fantastic tool that if you're not using it already, you need to be. It is a great way to easily get your hands on a Linux distribution to play around with in your home lab environment. If you're delving into DevOps, if you're trying to learn new Linux skills, if you just need a bash shell, a true bash shell to interact with various systems and use native Linux tools, Windows Subsystem for Linux allows you to do that without the need to spin up a full virtual machine using something like VirtualBox or a VMware Workstation. In today's video, I'm going to step you guys through tweaks and tips for setting up your Windows Subsystem for Linux WSL environment in a way that allows you to carry out DevOps processes, interact with various systems, run Ansible code, play around with Kubernetes, and the list goes on and on. So let's dive into my list of ultimate WSL tweaks and tips that you need to know. The first thing that we want to consider is actually getting WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux, installed on your Windows host. If you have installed WSL in the past, you know that from experience, this has been a piecemeal of commands, of packages that you have to download and have to install, such as the kernel update for Linux that you need to install on your Windows system once you actually have WSL installed. However, if you've not heard of this recently, Microsoft has made WSL available as a native Microsoft Store app. What that means is you no longer have to concern yourself with all of these little steps and all of the additional packages that you need to install and wonder if you have the latest version. Now that Microsoft has made this natively available on the Microsoft Store, it's simplified this process greatly. Let's take a look at what that looks like from the Microsoft Store. If you launch the Microsoft Store on your Windows 10 or Windows 11 works station and you search for WSL, you're going to find the available Windows subsystem for Linux that is natively found on the Microsoft Store. It means that you can install Windows subsystem for Linux as you would any other Microsoft app from the Microsoft Store. So it's really awesome. So very cool. All we have to do is simply install this app. Now you may be wondering, how do you know if you have installed this from the Microsoft Store? Actually fairly easy to tell if you're running the Microsoft Store version of WSL. In fact, if you issue the WSL dash dash version, it will show you all of the versions for WSL, the WSL version, the kernel version, and so on and so forth. If you are running the operating system integration version of WSL. In other words, the version that you have downloaded from a Microsoft download site, issuing the command WSL dash dash version will not return. In fact, it'll error out saying that it doesn't know what that parameter is. Now, it's an easy process to overwrite the current version of WSL that you have running as well. As you simply go out and install this from the Microsoft Store, it will overwrite the WSL version that you had that was integrated or that you had downloaded from the Microsoft download site. So it's they've made it fairly easy. There's not a lot of steps that you have to go through to purge your system of the old version of WSL so you can install the Microsoft Store app. In fact, it just simply overwrites what you have. Now that we have Windows Subsystem for Linux installed from the Microsoft Store, which is the latest version, we can get into some of these awesome tweaks that I want to share with you guys. One of the first tweaks is how to suppress the sudo password prompt for your sudo user, as this can get cumbersome if you're performing lots of operations requiring sudo privileges. So let's see how this is done. As you can see, I have finished initializing a brand new Ubuntu WSL environment, and I have created the user Linux admin to avoid the process of having to enter the sudo password each time we need to perform a sudo operation, we can modify the vi-sudo file to actually allow this user and designate this user to bypass the sudo password prompt. To do that, we're just going to issue the command sudo vi-sudo, and we're going to scroll to the bottom, and we're simply going to paste in a command designating the user, which is Linux admin, and all equals all no password, colon, all. And with that configuration, we're simply going to just 
save out and save our changes. With that configuration now, we will not be prompted for a sudo password when we need to perform sudo operations. Now with the permissions out of the way, we can get to the fun stuff. We can actually install some utilities and other tweaks that are awesome and I use these daily in my WSL configuration. The next tweak and configuration that I want to show you guys is how to enable WSL with systemd functionality. Up until just recently, installing systemd in a WSL environment was fairly complicated, requiring lots of config changes, lots of hacks, and installation of various packages just to get systemd working. However, this is now natively supported. Many packages require systemd, like microcates. If you want to play around with that package as well as many others, you need systemd. So let's see how this is easily enabled. We simply need to edit the etsy.wsl.config file. By default, there is nothing in the file. However, we want to place some config in the WSL file, and that config is the boot stanza, and we're going to put the configuration systemd equals true, and that's it. We just simply exit out of the file, saving our changes. Now, what we need to do is we need to shut down WSL. And we're going to shut down our WSL instance. That simple. We have now shut down the WSL instance. I'm going to close that tab and we're going to go back into our WSL instance. To verify that systemd is indeed installed, we can issue the command systemctl list unit files dash dash type equals service. And there we have it. We've got systemd installed and up and running as we can see the status of our services using the systemctl command. The first tool that I install in my WSL environment is Ansible. Ansible is a fantastic automation and configuration management tool and platform that allows you to automate literally everything from network devices to servers to virtualization environments, Windows, Linux, the list goes on and on. It's a great way to automate things in the home lab and in production environments. Installing Ansible in WSL is very simple. We simply need to chain a few commands together to install all of the prerequisites as well as the Ansible package itself. So I'm going to paste those commands into the command window. First line, we are installing some prerequisites as well as the krb5-dev package, which is one of the prerequisites for working with Kerberos. As you can see, later in the command stanza, we've got the apt install krb5-user. And this package allows us to use Ansible to not only work with Linux environments, but we can also work with Windows environments that are domain joints. And we can use Kerberos authentication to authenticate with Ansible to those Windows targets. So let's kick off these commands and we will install Ansible. Now we are asked the default Kerberos version 5 realm. I'm going to enter that now. Now our Ansible command set has completed successfully, so we should be able to enter the Ansible dash dash version command and see that Ansible is installed, which it is. Now that we've installed Ansible, I want to show you guys another cool tweak that I do with my WSL environment, and that is adding persistent aliases. Persistent aliases allow us to create short commands that may refer to much longer commands. And one of the really cool and easy use cases that I have for installing persistent aliases is referencing directories such as for my Ansible configuration. To create a persistent alias, we need to create a special file that's located in the home directory that is called the bash aliases file. To create that file, I'm just simply issuing a touch command, and we're going to create the file. And now we're going to edit the file. Now that we have the file in place, let's see how we can actually create an alias. So I'm going to paste in a command that I typically use, especially with my Ansible configuration. And when you guys see the directory structure, you will understand why I want to create an alias for this my Ansible code is found in a OneDrive folder that is mounted via the path that you see here. 
So I always create an alias Ansible dir or Ansible directory alias that allows me to easily get to that Ansible location. As you can see here, it's under the C drive, but the path is extremely long. Let's see how this works. So now I need to exit out and save our changes to this bash underscore aliases file. We need to close out of the command console window as these do not become active until we reinitialize our WSL command configuration. You can simply issue the command ansible dir and it should change us directly into the long directory path that we have as part of the alias. Awesome. So now we can just issue the command ansible dir and it automatically shifts me into the directory that I want to be able to get to, to see all of my Ansible configuration. PowerShell is arguably one of the coolest and most handy utilities that you can install in any environment, including WSL. And it's easy to install and it's a tweak and install of a configuration utility that I always do with my WSL environments. How can we easily install the PowerShell core cross-platform installation in WSL? The commands needed to install PowerShell in our WSL environment are actually not that many. It's fairly straightforward and the process is not difficult at all. So what I'm gonna do is just simply paste in the commands required to install PowerShell in our WSL environment. While it looks fairly busy what we've got going on, it's actually fairly straightforward. First, we are simply installing the prerequisites needed for PowerShell. Next, we are downloading the GPG key, the official key for installing the PowerShell repository from which we will install PowerShell. Next, we are installing the repository. Next, we are simply updating our catalog of applications. Now, we are adding the universe repository. And finally, we are actually installing PowerShell Core in our Ubuntu WSL environment. So let's execute this command and we will have PowerShell installed in our WSL environment. The list of commands have completed successfully. So now let's see if we actually have PowerShell installed. And for PowerShell Core, that command is PWSH. And as we can see, we have successfully installed PowerShell 7.3.1, which is the latest version of PowerShell as of the making of this video. Now that we have PowerShell installed, let's actually add a very useful module if you are working with VMware vSphere, and that is the install module VMware Power CLI. The VMware Power CLI module for PowerShell is the official module that allows us to interact with the VMware vSphere API, carrying out automated tasks and commands and processes in our VMware vSphere environment. And this is extremely helpful for automation, for reporting purposes, for troubleshooting, for quick tasks that you need to carry out in bulk. And I use this daily with my VMware vSphere environment. Now that the VMware PowerCLI module is installed, we can issue the command connect VI server. And this is the official commandlet that allows us to verify that we are indeed invoking the VMware PowerCLI module for PowerShell. And we are. We can see that it's prompting us for our vCenter server. I've already shown you guys how we can create an alias to reference a locally mounted directory. I want to show you guys with WSL how you can easily find and navigate local Windows directories and reference files that are located there. One of the really cool things that we can now do with the current version of WSL that was more challenging in previous versions was actually copy files into our WSL installation and copy files back and forth between WSL and our host machine. I wanna show you guys how you can quickly do this from the command line in WSL and bring up an explorer window that you can use to copy files or even edit files back and forth from your Windows host workstation and your WSL environment.
So let's take a look at this back and forth file navigation, both from a WSL perspective, as well as from our Windows host, how we can look at files and edit files from both perspectives. First, we've already looked at this just a bit with creating the file alias, but local machine files on your Windows host are presented to WSL at a mount point. I can literally change directory to mount C, and we just simply follow the user path here as we would in Windows. And with just that simple change directory, as you can see, I am now navigating the host WSL directory structure of my Windows host. Now, one other really cool thing that I want to show you guys that was extremely difficult or cumbersome in previous versions of WSL, and that was actually editing files in the WSL environment from your Windows host. I want to show you guys how much easier this is with modern versions of WSL in case you have not seen this. So to literally open a location in your WSL environment, you simply navigate to the point you want to open. So I'm in my home directory and I just simply issue the explorer.exe command with a period. In other words, telling explorer.exe, I want to expose or present this particular location of my WSL environment to my Windows host. So let's see what happens. So now I am dragging over the Explorer window that just opened in my Windows host. And here we see the home directory of my Linux admin account mounted for me in my Windows host. So I can literally edit files if I want. I can copy files back and forth. I can create files all of this from my Windows host workstation, which is awesome. What about installing Kubernetes inside WSL? With the functionality now added with systemd, we can now install MicroKates, which is a tiny Kubernetes distribution from Canonical that allows you to quickly and easily spin up Kubernetes clusters. Let's see how we can install MicroKates inside our WSL environment and start easily working with Kubernetes clusters. Now I'm going to show you guys just how easy it is to get up and running with micro Kates in a WSL environment. As you saw just a few steps ago, we were able to enable system D that is actually required for micro Kates. Now let's look at installation of micro Kates. That command is sudo snap install micro Kates classic. Once we issue the command, the micro Kates installation begins. And just a few moments later, we have a successful installation of micro Kates. So we can issue commands such as sudo micro Kates status. As we can see, micro Kates is running and as expected, it's not running in high availability mode. We can now issue commands such as sudo micro Kates kubectl get nodes. And there we go. We see we've got our single node micro Kates installation up and running. We can do dash O Y to get even further information. So this is an excellent way to experiment with Kubernetes without having to spin up virtual machines or other infrastructure just to get your hands on the technology. Minikube is another popular solution for playing around with Kubernetes. Can we install this in WSL2? Well, let's take a look. First, we need to install a few prerequisites, and I'm just going to paste these in. We're performing a sudo apt-get update, apt-get install, CA certificates, curl, gnupg, and lsv release. Next, we're going to install the official Docker GPG key. Now, we set up the repository. We perform an apt-get update. Now, we can actually install Docker. Next, we're going to add our current user into our Docker group to interact with Docker. Next, we're going to install contract. Now that we have these steps completed, we can actually begin the installation of Minikube itself. So let's step through those commands. Now we're going to pull down the Minikube release. Next, we're going to make that release executable. Now we're going to move the Minikube executable into our user local bin directory. 
we're going to set the configuration to use our Docker driver. Now that we have Minikube in place, we're going to install kubectl and set the context to Minikube. Now we can actually start the Minikube cluster. Excellent. Now the installation of Minikube is complete in WSL using the installation of systemd as well as the prerequisites that we have just ran through. Now let's use kubectl and actually look at our cluster. Awesome. There we see our Minikube cluster ready with the control plane sitting at version 1.25.3. What do you guys think about these WSL tweaks that allow you to get up and running with the latest functionality that Windows Subsystem for Linux offers? I think it's a great utility and I use it especially on my Windows workstation when I need access quick and easy to a Linux environment or a native Linux bash shell. How are you using Linux in your environment? Are you using WSL? Let me know in the comments. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel. I hope you guys are staying safe out there and please do check back often as I have more great content coming your way. Take care guys, I will see you guys soon.